assalamu alaikum dear students i hope you are all fine by the grace of almighty allah i welcome you all to the course of thermodynamics 2 fall semester 2020 core designation it's a core course it's a three credit hour course number of session per week will be 2 total session duration will be 3 hours this is our lecture 1 contents of lecture 1 are discussion of lesson plan and discussion of important topics of thermodynamics 1 these topics include thermodynamics and energy system and control volume properties of system state and equilibrium processes and cycles temperature scales and pressure lesson plan this is the lesson plan of thermodynamics 2 course description thermodynamics is an engineering science that is central to most mechanical engineering applications this course provides an introduction to the thermodynamic concepts that will be required in following courses and in professional application the course provides a background for understanding how energy systems such as engines and refrigerator operates so like in the subject of ic engine heat transfer refrigeration and air conditioning power plant all these courses that you will be studying in future semester are the application of thermodynamics test book the test book which we will be following is the fundamentals of thermodynamics by brognack and sontag seventh edition reference material will be fundamentals of engineering thermodynamics fifth edition by shapiro thermodynamics and engineering approach by sanger applied thermodynamics for engineering technologist by mcconaughey uh, the first book is our textbook and uh, all other books are the helping material uh, we which will be using uh, for our Uh, discussion and some of the numerical that are in the lecture are from the reference material as well lesson plan program learning outcome there are three program learning outcomes plo1 plo2 and plo3 plo1 is engineering knowledge and ability to apply knowledge of mathematics science and engineering to the solution of complex engineering problems plo2 problem analysis and ability to identify formulate and analyze complex engineering problems plo3 design and development of solutions and ability to design solution for complex engineering problems and design system components or processes that meet specified need with appropriate consideration for public health safety cultural societal and environmental consideration course learning outcomes there are three course learning outcomes clo1 clo2 clo3 clo1 comprehend and explains fundamental concept of thermodynamics and interpret engineering problems with the help of thermodynamic laws course learning outcome 2 demonstrate the capability to apply the laws of thermodynamics for open and closed system to solve steady state problems clo3 apply the knowledge to evaluate the cyclic processes and demonstrate the ability to design application dependent thermodynamic cycle there will be total of 5 modules that we will be studying in our the course of thermodynamics 2 in module 1 there will be energy analysis for control volume Cons conservation of mass and control volume the energy equation for control volume the steady state processes example of steady state processes multiple flow devices 
the transient processes engineering applications the, in the textbook of brockneck this is chapter 6 page number 180 in module 2 the name of the chapter is entropy the inequality of clausius entropy a property of system the entropy of pure substance entropy change in reversible processes the thermodynamic property relation entropy change of solid and liquid entropy change of an ideal gas the reversible polytropic process for an ideal gas entropy change of a control mass during an irreversible process entropy generation and entropy equation principle of increase of entropy entropy as a rate of equation module 3 the second law of thermodynamics heat engines and refrigerator the second law of thermodynamics the reversible processes factors that render process irreversible the carnot cycle two proposition regarding the efficiency of carnot cycle this is chapter 8 page 238 of our textbook power and refrigeration system gaseous working fluid module 4 the content of module 4 are air standard power cycles the Brighton cycle the simple gas turbine cycle with regenerator gas turbine power cycle configurations the air standard cycle for jet propulsion the air standard refrigeration cycle reciprocating engine power cycles the auto cycle and the diesel cycle This is chapter 12 of our book. The module 5 is general consideration of mixture ideal gases. A simple model of mixture involving gases and vapor, the energy equation applied to gas vapor mixture, the adiabatic saturation process, engineering applications, wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures and psychometric charts this is chapter 13 of our textbook page 523 as already discussed this is our textbook which we will be following and these are our reference material This is our course content, energy analysis of control volume. By control volume, we will mean that open system. Energy analysis of an open, of a open system. The second law of thermodynamics, entropy, power and refrigeration system, gaseous working fluid and gas mixture probable grading policy quizzes and, and assignment 10% sessional exam 1 15% sessional exam 2 15% projects and presentations 10% final exam 50% Revision of Fundamental Concepts of Thermodynamics 1 okay. Thermodynamics focus on the energy conversion process Energy storage and its drive relation between heat work and properties of the system You will study the heating and cooling effects in heating there will be heat pumps and cooling you will study about refrigeration system compression and expansion IC engines that 
internal combustion engines during such process we are transferring energy into or out of the mass so it change its condition expressed by properties like temperature pressure and volume this is the schematic diagram of steam power plant coal will be inserted in the power plant through coal silo contains chemical energy through the process of combustion the chemical energy will be converted into heat energy which will transfer heat to water stored in the drum and convert it into high pressure high energy steam which will strike at the turbine blades which is connected to the generator the generator will produce electricity low pressure low energy steam will come into heat exchanger and in the process of condensation the energy will be emitted taken out from the steam and uh, it will be used as district heating the steam will be converted into liquid and the pump will push the liquid back into the drum these are the flue gases which will be produced due to the process of combustion and upon purification these gases will be emitted in the tree okay simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle this is a fridge household fridge this is the cabinet of the fridge at the top of the cabinet you can see multiple tube that has a vapor coils at this is the back of the fridge at the bottom you can see compressor the multiple coils that you see at the back of the fridge the condensed coil this is the process cycle shown for vapor compression refrigeration cycle low pressure refrigerant refrigerant is introduced into the compressor which convert it to high pressure vapor there is a condenser coil which is shown here at the back side of the fridge heat transfer to the ambient air to the cooling refrigerant so here the high temperature refrigerant is entering into the condenser and low temperature refrigeration refrigerant is exiting out there is an expansion valve which will also low the pressure of the refrigerant so low temperature and low pressure refrigerant enter into the evaporator and the heat from the inside space of fridge will be exchanged through the evaporator and the side temperature of the fridge will be lowered thermodynamics and energy there are some basic definition energy the ability to cause change conservation of energy principle D during an interaction energy can change from one form to another but the total amount of energy remain constant energy cannot be created or destroyed the first law of thermodynamics an expression 
of the conservation of energy principle that is energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can change from one form to another form so mechanical energy can be converted into thermal energy and vice versa the second law of thermodynamics energy has qualitative as well as quantitative and actual process occur in the direction of decrease of quality of energy that is why the first law is also known as the quantitative law and the second law is also known as the qualitative law as well on the right side you can see a hot cup of coffee that is at 70 degree centigrade temperature of the environment is 20 degree centigrade so there will be a heat transfer from coffee to the environment through the wall of the cup heat flow in the direction of increase temperature greater energy input will produce a greater energy output for example greater energy input food then the energy output exercise will gain weight stored energy in the form of fat and the person who has smaller energy input then the output will lose weight macroscopic versus microscopic points of view there are two main branches of thermodynamics one is classical thermodynamics and the other is statistical thermodynamics classical thermodynamics de deals with the microscopic approach whereas statistical thermodynamics deal with the microscopic approach as the word suggests macro macro means large so we will deal with the large body and we will not consider our approach to the at the molecular level of the system we will study the gross or time average effect of the particles that may be observable and measurable by instrument okay as you can see that we cannot observe the system at molecular level so in the observa observable approach we will study the microscopic approach and measurable by instruments like pressure volume temperature these are the basic properties we which will be studying in the in our thermodynamics course <clears throat> so 90% of the course deals with the classical thermodynamics and macroscopic approach so only 10% of our courses deals with the microscopic approach we deal with volumes that are considerably large compared to molecular dimension it provides a direct and easy way to solution of engineering problems without going into micro level of study as it is used in this course no no what is statistical thermodynamics it is based on microscopic approach based on average behavior of large group of individual particle elaborate the method of study of behavior of individual particles that are atoms molecules we make an attempt to analyze system by considering it as comprising of discrete particle which are its atom and molecules we will occasionally use this approach to enhance our basic understanding okay this is the 
example of heat transfer to water from the macroscopic point of view we are concerned only with the energy that is transferred as heat that will be q change in the properties such as temperature pressure and volume temperature pressure volume amount of energy u enthalpy that the water contains at any instant questions about how energy is stored in the water does not concern us from a microscopic point of view we are concerned about the way in which energy is stored in the molecules is how how energy is stored at atomic level okay this these are some basic definition regarding system surrounding and boundary what is the system a quantity of matter or rich space chosen for study the space under the concentration or study is the is our system in study of thermodynamics we choose a small part of universe to which we apply the laws of thermodynamics we call this subset a system for example this is a very huge room and we choose uh, this part as our the study so this will become our system system is macroscopically identifiable collection of matter on which we focus our attention example water kettle or aircraft engine and what is surrounding the mass or region outside the system is called surrounding so this will become our surrounding the rest of universe outside the system close enough to the system have some participle effect on the system is called surrounding a boundary a boundary can be real or imaginary surface that separates the system from its surrounding for example wall of cattle the housing for engine a boundary can be real or imaginary okay there are some properties of boundary a boundary can be fixed or movable shared by both system and surrounding a boundary has no thickness no mass and no volume okay you can see here it's a fixed boundary it's a picture of piston cylinder system here is any gas Uh, mass 2 kg and volume is 1 meter cube heat is transferred to the cylinder and bond uh, the piston is moving upward so this are fixed its of boundary rest is the movable part of the boundary okay so there are two types of systems mainly closed or open system closed system 
a fixed amount of mass and no mass can be cross its boundary uh, the example of piston cylinder is example of closed system here uh, that is a movable boundary these are fixed boundaries but you can see that no mass can enter or exit the system however in a closed system energy can enter and leave the system at any point and what is open system okay in an open system energy as well as mass can is allowed to enter or exit the system in here is the definition of open system in which mass is permitted to cross the boundary in that it can enter the system and it how to exit the system most of the engineering devices are open system here you should know that in thermodynamics one where is thermodynamics 2 you will deal with the open system in thermo 2 you will study more about open systems and most of the engineering application are open system the boundaries of control volume the control volume is also known as open system where it is mentioned control volume it mean open system where this is there is mentioned control mass it means closed system so the boundaries of an open system or control volume system can also be real and imaginary or moving like uh, we have studied uh, studied earlier regarding the boundary of closed system okay here you can see a control wall with real and imaginary boundary this is a nozzle metric diagram of nozzle these are the boundary whereas these are imaginary boundaries as mentioned in open system we focus our attention at a specific point so we will regard this as a system like this is a nozzle and this is a part of nozzle which is under consideration similarly this is a piston cylinder system this is a moving moving boundary and these are fixed boundaries mass is entering from here and uh, it is pushing the piston upward this is a household example of an open system of a geyser uh, heating element or fire combustion is inside the geyser there is an bar with the fluid cold water enter here and hot water leave from the geyser here to the household Okay the th 
third type of system is isolated system in which there is no interaction between the system and surrounding whatsoever no mass transfer no energy transfer it is a fixed mass and energy and hence there is no mass energy transfer across the system boundary we must choose the system for each and every problem we work on so as we obtain best possible information and in how it behaves so in a problem is give us to decide what type of term we are dealing with either it is a closed term open iso dated properties of system any characteristics of system to which some physical meaningful number can be assigned without knowing the history behind it is known as property of the system example pressure volume temperature and mass etc viscosity electric resistance thermal conductivity so if you have any system this is some let's suppose it is water at any point you can assign or you can find out by with the help of any instrument pressure temperature volume viscosity mass these are the properties of the system these properties are classified into two basic types this intensive property and the kind excessive property intense properties are independent of mass of the system example velocity elation pressure temperature density etc whereas extensive properties depend on the mass or size or extent of the system varies directly with the mass example volume momentum mass energy etc okay there are some specific uh, properties as well specific properties these are very important in our subject okay this is a special case of intensive property it is the value of extensive property per unit mass as in the previous slide we have studied that extensive extensive properties depend on the mass like volume so volume is an extensive property but when we divide the volume mass then it become intense property so it is written that extensive proper 
extensive property divided by the specific property like specific volume specific enthalpy specific internal all these are the specific properties of the system extensive properties per unit mass such as specific volume are intensive property now we will discuss about the concept of continuum matter is made up of atoms that are widely spaced in the gaseous phase we view this substance as a continuous homogeneous matter with no holes that is the concept of continuum uh, now we know that in gaseous phase the distance the distance between the molecules is very large but the concept of continuum state that that these molecules are in continuous and homogeneous matter with no holes no space between atoms continuum idealization allow us to treat property as point function and to assume the properties very continually in space with no jump discontinuities so one molecule is here and one is here so there is a jump so to avoid this we introduce the concept of continuum point function means that property is known at any instant the idealization is valid as long as the size of the system we deal with is with is large relative to the space between the molecules this is the case in practically all problems we will limit our consideration to substance that can be modeled as continuum so in the in our course all the system we will study are the continuous system state and equilibrium state each unique condition of system is called state at a given state all properties of system have fixed values any operation in which one or more properties of system change is called change of state for example we have state 1 and state 2 at state 1 we have pressure p1 temperature t1 at state 2 we have pressure p2 and temperature t2 so at state 1 the value of p1 is fixed and t1 is fixed at state 2 the value of p2 and t2 is fixed during the change from pressure p1 to p2 this is known as change of state and t1 to t temperature will be changed from state 1 to state 2 thermodynamics deal with the equilibrium state so what is equilibrium a state of balance in equilibrium state there are no unbalanced potentials or driving force within the system there are three type of equilibrium thermal equilibrium if temperature is same throughout the system del t is equal to 0 in mechanical equilibrium there is no change in pressure at any point of the system a 
and in phase equilibrium if a system involves two phases and when the mass of each phase reaches an equilibrium level it stays there processes and cycle <coughs> process any change that a system undergoes from one equilibrium state to another is known as process so here is a pictorial view of process it's a pv diagram from state 1 to state 2 there is a process happening uh, the, there is a, that is a change in volume and that is the change in pressure is a piston cylinder um, the volume is reducing the initial volume was that and it is reduced by this this is the final volume path series of states through which a system passes during the process is known as path of the system to describe a process completely one should specify the initial and final states as well as path it follows to know the complete information we should know about the initial state that is state 1 the final state state 2 and the path which it follows we should know about all of these thing to know the process completely okay path functions and point functions what are point functions point functions depend on initial final states only these include pressure volume temperature turner energy enthalpy these all are state function and exact differential uh, what is meant by exact differential is that if you know if you want to know the value of delta p you know its value of pressure at point state 2 and you know the exact value of pressure at point state 1 and what are path function property of system that depends on final initial state as well as path of system work and heat are path function usually this sometimes this uh, is this uh, this statement or in the mcqs as well uh, work and heat are both are path function that are not point function they depend on the path followed by the process during from going straight one to straight two and these in exact differential you cannot find the q minus q okay same example is shown here cylinder system the cylinder in contains a shear fluid and the piston move from state 1 to state 2 the volume is reduced and the pressure is increased but now you can see that this path 1 and this is second path the initial and final state same but the path followed is different so the amount of work and heat in the process path 1 will be different from process path 2 to describe a process completely one should specify the initial and final state as well as path it follows quasi-static and quasi-equilibrium process when a process proceed in such a manner that the system remain infinitesimally close to the equilibrium state at all time the process is known as 
quasi static or quasi equilibrium process okay so when the word quasi static or quasi equilibrium come you should know that is a very slow process piston is moved slowly molecules will have sufficient time to redistribute and there will be no there will not be a molecule pile up in front of the piston pressure will rise at the same rate at all location piston move from this point to this very slowly so this is the quasi static or quasi equilibrium process and its opposite is non quasi equilibrium process that is fast process and what is the disadvantages of non quasi equilibrium process molecule near the face of the piston will not have enough time to escape and they will pile up all region creating a high pressure region so there will be no equilibrium in a fast compression process is known as quasi equilibrium due to pressure difference non quasi so this is quasi slow and for fast that is non quasi okay processes and cycle and you know the prefix iso is so used as to designate process that for which particular property remain constant example isothermal process in temperature remain isolic process in which pressure in concrete process in which volume remain constant similarly isentropic process isenthalpic process in which uh, entropy remain constant and in which enthalpy remain constant cycle process during the initial final state are identical okay so we will see in the next slide a system is said to have undergone a cycle if it returns to its initial state at the end of the process for example the process that is one that state to system goes first from state 1 and then goes back to state 2 from 1 to 2 and then back to state 1 this is known as cycle cyclic process some processes are shown this is a figure 1 cyclic process is shown how it is cyclic the process process start from state 1 and from this path it moves to state 2 and it come back to its initial state state 1 in a cyclic process this is a volume versus pressure pv diagram this is two in this isochoric process and isobaric is shown isochoric process is a constant volume process so it is a straight line parallel to y axis isobaric process is a constant pressure process and It, this is also a straight line parallel to x axis temperature versus entropy so 
isothermal process is a con temperature constant process it's a straight line parallel to x axis you can see and uh, isenthalpic or isentropic process in isentropic process it's a constant entropy process as isenthalpic process is a constant enthalpy process so it is a straight line parallel to y axis entropy and enthalpy remain constant throughout the process temperature and the zeroth law of thermodynamics statement of zeroth law of thermodynamics if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with the third body they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other so here you can see there are three bodies a b and c if you see that body a is in thermal equilibrium with body b and body b is thermal is in thermal equilibrium with body c then body a is also in th thermal equilibrium with body c this is the zeroth law of thermodynamics by replacing the third body with a thermometer the zeroth law can be stated as two bodies are in thermal equilibrium if both have same temperature even if they are not in contact with each other so we have replaced the third body with the thermometer and the temperature and the thermometer you can see is also 25 degree centigrade temperature of first body is 25 and body b is also 25 so all these are in thermal equilibrium with each other temperature bear an important relation to thermodynamics as force does to static or velocity does to dynamics so temperature difference is the driving force in thermodynamics temperature scales all temperature scales are based on some easily reproducible states such as freezing boiling points of water the ice point and the steam point as you know that the uh, ice point the rate and the steam point is 100 degrees centigrade. ice point the temperature equal to 0 degree centigrade or 32 fahrenheit at which pure water and ice coexist in equilibrium at one atmospheric pressure steam point a mixture of liquid water and water vapor in equilibrium at one atmospheric pressure that is at 100 degree centigrade or 212 fahrenheit there are two main scales which we follow celsius scale and fahrenheit scale uh, during our study we should be main focusing on our attention to celsius scale we plot a graph of temperature versus pressure for constant volume gas thermometer this is a constant volume gas thermometer shown here so how this device work is that uh, when you increase the pressure the temperature also increases and when you reduce the pressure the temperature also reduces so by measuring the pressure you can calculate the temperature as well gas thermometer is extrapolated to zero pressure then the absolute zero temperature is found how absolute zero temperature is found that we reduce the pressure to zero an absolute zero of temperature has been fixed and absolute scale of temperature can be defined temperature on absolute celsius scale can be obtained by adding 273 to all temperature on celsius scale that is known as Kelvin scale so for example if the temperature is 10 degrees centigrade and you have to find this in Kelvin then you have to simply add 273 plus 10 283 Kelvin 
in almost all of the problem we will use the kelvin scale in our problem solving thermodynamic temperature scale a temperature scale that is independent of property of any sub substance this scale does not depend on the properties of substance that is a kelvin scale or rankine scale we will be using the kelvin scale during our studies okay whenever the value of temperature is used in equations relating to fundamental laws then the value of temperature whose reference point is the true zero or absolute zero is used so we will use the kelvin scale so these are the relation to find the temperature in kelvin scale or random kind scale we will simply add 273 to the temperature which is given to us in centigrade scale Okay. The difference between Kelvin scale and centigrade scale is same, and the difference between Rankine scale and Fahrenheit scale is same. So these are the relation to find the temperature in Kelvin scale and Rankine scale, and between Rankine and Kelvin scale, Fahrenheit and Celsius scale. And that is important bar for magnitude of the temperature in Kelvin centigrade scale, Rank and Fahrenheit scale. Okay. Pressure. A normal force exerted by fluid per unit area is known as pressure. When dealing with liquid. and gases we ordinarily speak of pressure for solids we speak of stresses in our said pressure will be mentioned in our problem solving so you can see there are two person standing person 1 and person 2 the weight of person 1 is 80 lx 60 ag the weight of second person is 136 kg so the resistance offered by the floor is also known as the pressure so you can see that the pressure offered by the floor to per first person is 0.23 where the pressure offered by the floor to the second person who is uh, heavier than the first person is greater than the first pressure of the first person that is in 46 kg force per centimeter square so there are some units regarding the pressure these are si units and these are english units we will use english si units for our problem solving uh, in a problem usually the pressure is given as pascal kilo pascal mega pascal bar atmospheric so these are the relation how you can convert from one bar as one bar is equal to 10 100 kilo pascal it's uh, equal to 101 kilo pascal basically so there are three types of pressure you should know. about absolute pressure gauge pressure and vacuum pressure absolute pressure is the actual pressure at the position measured relative to absolute vacuum absolute zero pressure gauge pressure difference between the absolute pressure and the local atmosphere most measuring devices are calibrated to read zero atmosphere so they are indicate they indicate gauge pressure so we have to add the atmospheric into the gauge pressure to know the absolute pressure and vacuum pressure pressure low atmospheric pressure is known as vacuum pressure so that is a you can 
can find the uh, absolute pressure through this so you can see that the atmospheric pressure from here to here but in gauge pressure the refine is drawn zero at the atmospheric pressure to find the absolute pressure you have to add m2 gauge pressure 